keep letting people in as they come. Um, so for those of you who have not had a chance to introduce myself to, I am Megan Bello. I am the principal here at Laurelton Party. I have absolutely loved, even in this crazy, hectic time, um, being back at LP and working with an incredible staff. I am very, very proud of the team that's going to be presenting you to you tonight. They have handled this time with grace and perseverance, and your children are very, very lucky uh, to be able to work with them. I also want to thank all of our families. I know it is very difficult uh, to either have made the decision to keep your kiddos home and do that remote instruction or to bring them to school, uh, because at the end of the day, we want everyone to be safe. And that's our priority. And so we thank you for entrusting us with that very huge responsibility. We do not take it lightly. So tonight we'll do a few introductions and then these guys have a presentation for you. And then at the very end, uh, we'll do a, a, Q, a Q &A. Um, So if there's any questions that are relevant to the grade level, we'll be able to answer those. I am going to ask, however, that if you have very specific questions to your child, if you could hold off on that tonight uh, and reach out to your child's teacher, I know they'll be more than happy uh, to work that out with you um, tomorrow or next week, okay? Uh, before I do introductions, just one more uh, nagging reminder from me. I need to make sure that we have your most updated uh, phone numbers and emails. Uh, I have been sending lots of information to families uh, the last several weeks. So if you haven't gotten anything from me, uh, please call the main office tomorrow and make sure uh, that we've got updated info. Uh, I apologize for the obnoxious amount of information I'm sharing with you, but there's just so much. And it's important that I give you as much as I can. Um, so I appreciate your understanding and your collaboration, okay? So with that, uh, let's introduce our team to you. So we will start with Christy. Make sure you unmute yourself, guys. <laughs> All right, um, I am Christy Brennan, and I am the one of one of the remote teachers this year. And I've been teaching, this is my fifth year teaching and my second year in fifth grade. Thank you. Jake? Hi, I'm Mr. Spadoni. This is my fifth year at LP and fifth year teaching, and I'm really looking forward to this year. Thank you. Kathy? Hi, I'm Kathy Miller. This is my 27th year of teaching. I'm the old folks here in, in, this, in this crew. Um, this is actually my first year back as a classroom teacher in 11 years, and I've done reading at LP for the past 11 years. Okay, thank you. Jackie? Hi, I'm Jackie Antonelli. This is my sixth year at LP and my eighth year of teaching. All right, thank you. Christina? Hi, I'm Christina Ikes. This is my second year teaching and I am the other remote teacher this year. Rebecca? Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca Weitzel. This is my seventh year teaching and my third year at LP and my third year teaching fifth grade. Um, and I'm one of the in-person teachers. All right, and Diane. Hi, I am Diane Martello, and this is my 15th year teaching and my eighth year at Laurelton, third year as fifth grade teacher. Okay, and we are uh, missing Mrs. Crawford tonight. Uh, she needed to be with her family tonight, and so we're, uh, we're okay that she's doing that. And so um, for any Mrs. Crawford students, um, I know she's very sad she couldn't be here, but if you guys have questions, definitely reach out to her in the next coming days, okay? All right, did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint. Okay, so hopefully you all can see that. Um, guys, I'm going to leave it just like this. I found in the other sessions that it just got a little wonky when I tried to do in presentation mode. So we'll just do it this way. 
okay? So we welcomed you. We met some amazing team members and we'll get started social emotional learning. And I'll take care of that. So social emotional learning is a great added section that we have brought to our day at Laurelton Party. Uh, it starts first thing in the morning and it's a myriad of things where we will do some relationship building. We will use a curriculum called second step to reinforce growth in self-management and having kids be more responsible for decision-making, um, social emotional awareness. We also will have opportunities for our counselor, Ms. McAllister, to come in and teach lessons. Our first one starts, well, mine anyway, in my class in October for a bullying um, lesson. And honestly, it is, again, I'm gonna say it again, a great time to build relationships. Ask children, you know, what's on their mind. Ask them what they did the day, the night before. Just honestly, it's probably my most favorite part of the day. Um, again, and I also, you know, so through the second step curriculum, the kids are able to build their um, tolerance of what can they do if there's a problem, um, what coping skills can they learn to handle matters. So. I, again, it's, I think it's, again, the most important thing, especially during these COVID times. Perfect. Thank you. Before I go to the next slide, I did forget to remind families, as the team is going through their presentation, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them right in that chat feature, and then we'll get to those later. So I forgot to mention that. Okay, math. All right, I will be talking about math. Um, math is what we usually spend about an hour of our day on. Um, we use the curriculum called Math Expressions. And the focus of our fifth grade year is fractions and decimals. So we're very heavy on fractions and decimals this year. Um, in particular, with both of them, we do adding and subtracting of fractions um, and decimals. And we also do multiplying and dividing fractions and decimals. Um, we work on division with whole numbers. So dividing a two-digit number by a two-digit number um, or a two-digit number by anything bigger. Um, we also multiply multi-digit numbers. So three-digit by three-digit. Um, I know some parents have trouble with some of the new ways that we are teaching the kids to multiply or divide. Um, there are some, some wonky things that we did not learn when we were in school. Uh, so you may see some crazy box methods and um, things that you're not familiar with. So if you do see something that you have no idea what it is and you try to Google it and there's tears and you know, you're, you're at your wit's end, just please reach out because we totally understand. We have to learn it before we can teach it. So we totally get it. Mm -hmm. um, so the, you'll see some of that stuff this year. Um, we, my hair's not purple. If it looks purple, it's not. It's just my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also end the year with algebra, um, patterns, coordinate graphs, which is the kids really enjoy it. It's a nice way to end the year. Um, and a little bit of measurement, which is interesting, and um, some geometry. So it's, it's a pretty heavy year with fractions, and it's, it's a big jump from fourth grade to fifth grade. Um, and we know that there's deficits from the learning in fourth grade um, being remote. Um, so we are going to try to incorporate some of that and make sure that the kids have that foundation of fractions and decimals before we move on to um, the adding and sub subtracting and, and the higher level skills. Okay, I'm doing reading and writing. And um, reading and writing is really a, a bulk of our day. I mean, essentially you're using your reading and writing skills for all of the curricular areas, including math and science and social studies. So we try to integrate it throughout the day. 
But specifically our ELA block is a two hour block during over the course of the day. We start with the reading units of study and there are four in-depth units. So they'll take about six to eight weeks each. Two of them are fiction and two of them are nonfiction. And all of the units include a mentor text that we're using as a read aloud. Um, and some of them, it's a chapter book. And we'll take a look at what that, chap that character's feeling, um, the way that character reacts to a situation. And as students are reading their own independent books, we're able to pull out some of those character traits and really adjust that curriculum to all of the students with their individual needs as far as skill instruction and development. Um, the students will also receive some small group instruction that's appropriate for where they are as a reader that we can help them advance on. In our writing units, um, we have a persuasive essay that they'll be working on this year, a personal narrative, which is kind of a story, um, having them really in depth tell a story that it makes something clear an event in their life. And then also a report. This is a nonfiction report where they are doing a lot of research skills. And so that's really integrating a lot of the technology piece that we're gonna be talking about in a, in a little while. Um, a student should be reading at least 20 minutes every night, either from a text that they have at home or that they've taken home or from their iPad. And again, we'll be talking about some of those apps where they can access some um, text while they're at home. All right, so science and social studies. Um, usually for science, we like to focus on um, water, like the cycles and the systems. So we really focus on like the water cycles, different landforms, um, environmental cycles, and also like of various types of earth systems. So we go in depth with that. And we also like to um, go into the solar system. Usually in fifth grade is when we also get to do the challenger field trip. Um, unfortunately at this time, we're unsure um, what will be happening with that. Um, so that is going to be kind of a more as we get closer to February, um, seeing where, where, where things are at with that field trip. Um, with social studies, we're going to be focusing on um, government, migrations, and geographical features. We do a lot with uh, westward expansion, um, and we also kind of take all of these events and all the things we're learning in the, the western hemisphere and compare that to the rest of the world. So the kids are going to be kind of looking at other events that have taken place in the past um, and in the present uh, with social studies and in history. Um, also in this time of the day, um, we like to really build their research skills and get them prepared for middle school. So this is a time to teach them about um, what is a valid source, uh, how can, what, what research sites are good to use, which research engines are good to use, um, and what is a, a website that you can actually get good information from. So that is what we're gonna be really going in depth on um, in science and social studies this year. Talking about technology, um, this is a big one this year, especially if there is a need for us to shut down and we have to, everybody has to be remote this year. Um, students are taking their iPads home every single day. So it's expected that they get charged every night and are brought back to school if they are in person. Um, so we are spending a good chunk of time in the beginning of the school year going over these, um, these resources and how to log into them, how to properly use them. So we can try to alleviate any questions that we might have um, that came up at the end of last year. So. Um, one of the big ones that we use is Schoology. That's our learning management system. That's where teachers can upload resources for students. They can also, it's almost like a Facebook for school. Um, the kids can communicate through posts on the teacher created groups. Um, teachers can put files in there. Um, students can communicate with teachers through personal messaging. Um, there's a lot of functions that we can use through Schoology and that's what most students did use during the shutdown. We also have Sora. 
Um, Sora is a, an app where students can take books out of the library. Um, it used to be called o Overdrive, so some of you may have seen that or even use it yourselves. Overdrive is an app that um, connects to the public library, um, the Monroe County Public Library System. Sora is just a kid-friendly friendly version of that app. Um, so kids have access to books that we have available in Monroe County. And we also have some books that are specific to Laurelton Party that kids can check out. And those are all eBooks. Um, there are some audio books on there that kids can listen to as well. Um, talking points is the main form of communication between parents and teachers um, throughout the day. It's kind of like texting. I know a lot of us have used Remind in the past and you've all gotten text messages from us or from Mrs. Bello um, throughout the past couple of weeks just communicating things. Um, please know it's limited to I think 320 characters so we are not trying to send you a bajillion texts all at once. Um, we're just very limited to how many things we can send you at once. Um, Teams is the next one. So we are uh, phasing out of using Zoom with the students and we are moving into using Teams with them. I know the two remote classes are currently using Teams with their students. Um, and if there is another shutdown, then we will be using Teams with the students instead of Zoom. So um, in person, we are gonna try to get the kids familiar with what that is and how to use it. Um, it's pretty similar to Zoom where you know, you can see the kids, they can see you, it's video conferencing. Class Link um, is like a one-stop shop for all of the kids. All of the apps that we, well, most of the apps that we have available for the kids that the district has purchased will be in Class Link. So the students will log into their Class Link account and they'll be able to um, access those without having to do additional logins. So in class link, um, they'll have things such as vocabulary, which are those awesomely fun videos, those rap and hip hop videos that we show. Um, IXL, I thought was in class link, but I actually found out today it is not. Um, and Nearpod, a lot of us are using Nearpod. They have really fun interactive slideshows and um, lessons to do in there. So that's another activity. And then the next slide, slide is a little bit more. So our district is a Microsoft um, district. So we use the Microsoft Office Suite. So we have um, OneDrive, which is like the cloud. I know a lot of us save things to the cloud. So Microsoft's version of the cloud is OneDrive. So the kids can save their files personally to OneDrive that's not shared with everybody else. Um, we use Microsoft Word, which is typing, word processing, and worksheet completion. I know last year um, the kids used Notability to complete a lot of their worksheets. So this year we're moving to Microsoft Word. It has the same functions. Um, the kids can draw on it. They can type on it. Um, same kind of things. Um, there's Excel, which is your typical spreadsheet. PowerPoint, we are moving to that instead of Keynote. Um, the Zooms that are not Zoom teams that we just talked about and then SharePoint, which is um, like a OneDrive that can be shared with other people within the district. Um, as always, for the past several years, we've used uh, PBIS to reach out to our kids to have them have more positive reactions with each other and have a more confident attitude with each other. Um, for those of you that are new to the district, uh, we use the acronym HEART throughout the day. So the H is honesty, empathy, acting safely, responsible, and being a thinker. Um, we're encouraging all of our students to use these to help them become stronger students and better citizens uh, day in and day out. Um, we're putting an emphasis this year on lessons that pertain to health and safety especially about wearing masks properly and why and why we're washing our hands constantly to protect those around us and make others feel comfortable. Um, it goes beyond the school walls to uh, boys and girls will start being will start doing activities we refer to as hard at home. So you'll see those come out here and there. Um, the students who are in the remote classes, uh, 
will also be receiving lessons from the remote teachers on heart throughout the year and whether showing heart at home and in the community. It's, this doesn't pertain to just the school walls, it's within the community too. And that's what's also about our PBIS committee and uh, showing heart. Okay, then we have some helpful tips and reminders for you. Uh, just to reiterate, make sure you're communicating with your child's teacher. If they come home and say something that, um, you know, they were confused about or upset about that they're not comfortable telling their teacher, um, just make sure you communicate with us so we can clear up any confusion or um, just make sure we nip things in the bud. Um, ask your child open-ended questions about his or her day. Um, you know, just saying, did you have a good day? You're going to get a yep. We hear a lot of parents say, they don't tell me anything. Even my own kids do the same thing. Um, so, you know, open-ended questions. What was your favorite part of today? Or what made you laugh today? Or, you know, who did you play with at recess? And what did you do? Those kinds of things. Um, help your child get a good night's sleep. We know that a lot of our kids like to say they went to bed at 2 a.m. We we know some of them, it's not true. They're just trying to show off a little bit, but we hear it all the time. Kids say, oh, I'm so tired. I didn't go to bed until late. Um, I was up watching TV or playing on my phone or watching a TikTok or whatever they're doing. Um, so just make sure they get a good night's sleep. Uh, if you're not sure of something, please ask, especially with math or reading, writing, any curricular um, items, just make sure you ask. We totally understand that it's very confusing and it will just get worse from here on out. <laughs> um, and then the last thing, iPads will be coming home every night and should be charged nightly. Okay, so we're to the questions portion. So I'm gonna stop share here and we'll bring us all back here. And it looks like we do have a couple of questions. So let me bring those up. Okay. Um, Miss Antonelli, someone loved your purple hair, by the way. Maybe you should consider it. I don't know, just saying. Um, <laughs> let's see, guys. Is reading from an iPad different from a book? And should reading include some old-fashioned books? That's a great question. I mean, I think that's a matter of personal preference. I mean, some, some of the apps on the iPad do have um, a place for the kids to click on it and the kids can listen to the book being read aloud to them. There's also some that have a filter. If there's a word that's unfamiliar, you can click on that word and it'll give them the word and the definition. So in that way, you're getting some assistance. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, if they're just listening to a book, they're not really reading it. The key is that you want your child comprehending the text. It, it's really not so much that they're, they're just listening to it. If they're just listening to it and you ask them what they, they read and they can't tell you anything about it, then they haven't really read it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, just comprehension hope he has more to part so it, It's really she, up to you no, he just if you want to balance that and have Hold on, Cass. Sorry, I just had to mute. Sorry, can you unmute yourself? I really did want to hear what you had to say, Mrs. Miller, I promise. Shut me down. Shut me Sorry. down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really do think it's a, a matter of personal preference. I, I really think the key is that if you're interacting with your child after he or she has read some text, and again, with the open-ended questions, about what he or she has read. That's what's really going to help with the reading. If, if the kids feel more comfortable reading on the iPad and, and that's more accessible for you, there's really nothing wrong with that. But really having that conversation with them about what they've read. Okay. Um, guys, can you talk a little bit about specials, music, and there is, um, uh, wondering about Spanish too. I can answer that one. We are not offering Spanish uh, this year. Uh, the East Irondequoit Intermediate Schools are, are not um, 
primary years program schools um, anymore. And so with that requirement, um, Spanish is not being offered this year. But do you guys want to talk a little bit about specials? Yeah, so for fifth grade specials, the boys and girls are getting three days of PE every other day. Uh, Mr. Crushamani and Mrs. McNally are usually taking them outside and keeping them spread out and keeping them physically active. Um, art and music are coming to the classroom for the first half of the year. It's two days of art and one day of music and half of the year will switch where it's two days of music and one day of art. All of these are 50 minutes long. And for the remote kids online, they are getting materials posted to Schoology from their special area teachers um, for the week. They have gym three days a week and then art and music one day a week. So they're not following a six day rotation, just a days of the week schedule. Okay, awesome. Um, question about um, emails. Um, have you guys shared those with families? And what is your preferred way of being contacted? Okay, as far as I'm concerned in, in my classroom, I am open to any mode of communication. I've been doing talking points a lot, but I could see that not everybody's used to that and, and, and frequenting it. So I sent out just a hard copy of my email that that's okay to contact me through or my phone number at work. I'll Whatever second that any means parents. of communication is appreciated, especially uh, giving and taking on the communication. If you need something for us, whatever it takes to encounter this, please do it um, and we'll respond and vice versa. If we need to try to get a hold of you, we'll do whatever we can to get a hold of you. Yep, it sounds like that's going to be pretty common amongst all of the fifth grade team. Um, so if you haven't heard from them, um, we can make sure maybe you can call the school and we'll make sure that you get their email address. But it is their first name underscore last name at eastiron.monroe.edu. So we'll make sure you guys get that information. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about how um, you're doing social studies and science this year? Um, maybe not necessarily in your schedule, but how you're going to do that. Um, so in my classroom, I'm currently, I have a couple of days a week that it's going to be about a 50 minute block. Um, and then we're going to kind of squeeze some in as well in the beginning of the week. So on our six day rotation, I have two of the days that are devoted to two 50 minute blocks of science and social studies, as well as a third day as well. Um, and that's for a little bit shorter of a period, but I'm trying to get it in so they at least have 30 minutes technically, you know, on a, on a five day plan. Um, so a lot of it's going to also be integrated. So like Ms. Miller was saying that um, with the ELA, we're going to be doing a lot of reading and writing that is tied in with the science and social studies. Um, if you got a schedule from one of your fifth grade teachers that didn't have science and social studies on there yet, um, I'm sure it will be um, put on there soon. So if it's not there yet, I'm sure it will be integrated in shortly. Um, I think a lot of us are still kind of trying to figure out our own schedules. Um, so just be patient with us, but it will be in everyone's schedule and it will be taught. Excellent. Um, can you confirm that there will be no homework? Um, so yeah, the, with, with everything going on this year um, and the fact that we have students who are here in person and we have students who are remote, we are removing homework as an expectation for this school year. But that being said, um, every grade level is asking the kids to read nightly for at least 20 minutes. That's still very, very important. Um, and we hope that that will continue. So uh, while you won't see math worksheets coming home and things like that, um, 20 minutes of reading um, would still be great. Okay. How about recess? Um, do students go outside? Can you guys talk a little bit about recess? Yes, I There is recess every day. Um, it is built into the schedule. Most teachers, it's 20, 20 25, 30 minutes of recess. Um, we do have a playground schedule. Once every six days, we get a 30 minute block on the playground so that we can make sure it's sanitized in between class uses. Um, so that's one out of every six days. 
The other days we are playing in the fields um, or on the back hill, but making sure that our classes are staying in their cohorts so that we're not mixing kids. Yeah, we're really trying to take advantage of the weather while we can. We know what Rochester is like. We know we're going to be uh, caged up pretty soon. So getting the kids outside every day is super important. Um, okay, band. Uh, how will band lessons be handled? So uh, many of you know that our music program, unfortunately, is going to look very different this year. Uh, we do not have chorus. Um, because of the guidelines from uh, the Department of Health and from the state. Uh, we are, however, trying to give our kids an opportunity to get their hands on some instruments. So what Mr. Sabine is doing is he is taking very small groups of students, maybe two, three. They have to be from the same class. Again, we're not mixing classes and we have space in the cafeteria for them to space out more than 12 feet and they are able to practice playing that instrument in that small group. There will, however, not be an ensemble. So there will never be, unfortunately, an opportunity this year for them to all play together, um, which is heartbreaking for all of us who are such a big music community. Um, so hopefully next year that will go away. But that is how band uh, is being handled this year. Um, this is, I, I think, for the remote teacher, so I apologize if I'm, I'm misunderstanding this question, but um, guys, can you talk about specials and being posted on Schoology? So um, the special area teachers will be posting their specials to um, their individual course on Schoology, so every Friday, Mr. Kashimani is uploading the PE for the three days for the following week. Um, and so unfortunately with the remote, it's not a face-to-face -face like, like we are right now. It's they're given an assignment and they're doing it and completing it independently um, during our special block. For art, uh, Ms. Ryan is doing the same thing. She's uploading and then they complete their assignment individually and then resubmit it to her. So that's how it's working for remote. And I know this week they were not able to get materials up online for special areas this week. So as a class, we've been coming up with things that they can do, but starting next week, materials will be posted for special areas. Yeah, but I believe they've already started posting some of those. So you might already see that on their Schoology folders. Um, there was a question about asking um, teachers questions outside of class. Um, so I'm going to handle that one. Um, you know, if you guys are in need of support, you can always email, call, and leave messages. Um, we do need to have a healthy work-life balance, though, and these guys have families of their own and lives, and so um, the expectation that they'll get back to you outside of school hours, we need to be really careful about that expectation. Um, I do not have that expectation of them. They, they need to take care of their families. Um, however, that being said, that next day when they get to school and they have messages from you, emails, talking points, whatever that may be, um, I, I certainly hope they're getting back to you and I, I know this team will. So I, I hope that answers that question. Again, I apologize if I, I misunderstood um, what that one was. Okay, so we're getting to that point where we're, we're past the time that we were going to allot for um, this uh, event. So if you guys do have more questions, please reach out to your teachers. Um, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, I, don't, I don't work just within school hours. I do try to get back to families as soon as I can. So um, thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. We hope this was helpful to you guys. And uh, we look forward to the day that we can all be together again in person. So until then, have a great night, you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello. Michaela, I see Bye. you. Bye. Hello. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Hello. I want to see you. I wish I could show you, honey. I still have the tiles that you made me. They're on my wall. But I can't, I'm like stuck in my station right now, so I can't show Hi. you. So yeah. good to see you, though. Yeah. All right. See you guys, too. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.